Hello and welcome back to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. We thank you for joining us today. During the last segment, we were talking a little bit about uh, rules of thumb for retirement planning, just commenting on Fidelity, the one of the nation's largest 401k providers, as well as for individual investors, they offer accounts. Uh, they came out with some new retirement um, information for people to try to make it simpler, and they came up with this magic number of eight times your salary at retirement is the number that, that you should save. And we were just, I was just commenting that it's not quite that simple. There's a number of variables that you need to look at. Uh, the, the assumptions that go into that number, there's a lot of assumptions to make, especially if you're younger, trying to look out in the future. So a couple things that you want to take a look at. Number one is the more you make, the more you need to save. So a worker that makes you know, $50,000 a year, Social Security is going to be a bigger part of his retirement than someone making $500,000 a year. And so when you look at the assumptions, you have to look at how much is assumed for Social Security. Um, I would say the same thing. If you're younger, uh, the uncertainty of Social Security, I do think something's going to be there, but the uncertainty of the amounts and how it's going to work, you would want to definitely save more than that. Um, Number two is if you plan to retire early, the fidelity numbers assume you've retired at age 67. Because of the fluctuation in returns, uh, market, the uncertainty, the, the longer number of years you have in retirement, if you're trying to retire at 50 as opposed to 67, you know, that's 17 more years. Eight times your salary is not going to be near enough. Uh, I would want a much, much larger buffer. We would counsel people, you know, to, to have a much larger buffer. Of course, your lifestyle matters. You know, are you a big traveler? Uh, your health care is a huge expense. You know, do you have some sort of uh, employer-provided health care if you're retiring early or if you're on Medicaid? Um, Medicaid. If you're on Medicare, you know, do you have a, a Medicare supplement? You know, are you healthy? Things like that, long-term care. There's a number of factors that go into that. Uh, I think this study assumed about 85% that you needed to replace. You know, we see most people going into retirement, uh, they don't really want to take a, a pay cut when they go into retirement. So we, we generally assume 100%. Um, and of course, any other savings that you may have really helps a lot. Even a small pension from a company or, um, you know, some other source of some income helps. Now, on the flip side, so we recommend that you you know, work with some sort of advisor, you know, as you're reaching close to that retirement age, you know, somewhere around, you know, in your 50s for sure if you haven't taken a look at it. But even then, the, the, it, it's very important that you understand that this sort of false precision of retirement planning, there's way too many variables, you know, investment returns, inflation, tax policy, Social Security policy, Medicare policy, um, there's no way you can project an exact number. And so the, the, really the best you can help for is sort of a, a probability-based scenario, which is what we do. We, we do retirement planning using simulations to come up with a probability that, you know, you have a 70% probability or a 99% probability that you won't outlive your money, sort of acknowledging the fact that there's way too many variables to, to, to be for sure, especially the longer you have till, till retirement. Um, anyway, so we want you to take these uh, rules of thumb with some bit of skepticism and work with an advisor to, to come up with some reasonable, realistic numbers for yourself. Okay, we've heard a lot about the uh, impending fiscal cliff coming up, the cuts to uh, defense spending and um, Medicare spending and, and these tax rate hikes, well, buried within that is a huge, huge increase for dividend income. We had a, a client come in the other day that um, we were talking about dividend paying stocks and, you know, they had one, they, their portfolio consisted basically of one huge position of a dividend paying stock and it had done very well over the years um, in but it was throwing off taxable income. And, and in their tax bracket, in the lower tax brackets, dividend income has actually been taxed at 0% the past several years. So if you were in the 10 or 15% income tax bracket, your dividends were actually taxed at zero. It's kind of hard to 
illustrate the tax code is very confusing, as you know, but if you're in the lowest tax bracket, the dividend and capital gains rate were actually zero. And then if you were in a higher tax bracket, they were taxed at a maximum of 15%. Well, that's about to change, and this 15% rate is zero or 15% rate is going to go to uh, up to the ordinary income tax rates up to uh, as high as 43.4%. Uh, if you're in the highest marginal tax bracket, dividends will be taxed at your ordinary income rate plus the new Medicare tax, the 3.8% surtax on investment income if you make over $250,000. And so dividend income is really going to take a, a large um, hit when it comes to tax preferred uh, return. Uh, of course, that doesn't count the state tax. A lot of states don't have a specific dividend tax. It just gets thrown in with your ordinary income. So, for example, in North Carolina, you can pay, you know, an additional 7 to 8 percent. So you're talking about dividends in North Carolina for the ha highest taxpayers being taxed at over 50 percent. <laughs> over 50 percent of the dividends will be taxed. So if you're, if you're getting a, you know, a, a 2.5 percent dividend yield after tax, it's, you know, one and a quarter percent. All right, well, we're coming up to our second break. When we come back, we'll continue talking about dividend investing and the impending tax hikes and, and what that means, uh, as well as some other topics. So for All Things Money, I'm your host, David Blaine, and we'll be right back after a few short messages from our sponsors. <music> 